back again. Gaz at Fermented World. Today I am making a roasted stout with the addition of some Turkish Delight. So Turkish Delight roasted stout. It's going to be gorgeous. First off, I have boiled for 15 minutes the Galena hops, which is now about to be poured in through a mesh sieve. And for once, I actually aimed it correctly. This just strains all the hops, saves it going in your drink. And we'll get that in there, because we want it all. Like so. And normally, I've got a homemade press, which I've pressed down with it, but I forgot to sterilize it. So, I am going to quickly do that now. Okay, got some water over here, nice and sterile. And I'm not too bothered about using it straight away. Reason being is I sterilized it last time before putting it away as well, so it's super clean. And all it is is the inside of a tuna tin. Tuna, tuna, whatever you want to call it. Tomato, tomato, eh? Right, squeeze all that lovely, lovely stuff out. And then we get rid of that. We don't need that now. Pop that over here in something so it's out of the way, it won't rip. I try to prepare everything so that I can just do it all in one foul sweep without having to keep pissing around. We get a liquid malt extract. I love using mangrove jacks. Now this is supposed to turn out at approximately 4.9. Pardon me. But I'm adding a lot more sugar with the Turkish Delight. Hopefully we're using, wherever it is, mangrove jacks M42, New World Strong Ale Yeast. So I'm hoping with it being a strong ale yeast, it might be able to munch on, give us a bit more of an ABV. <clears throat> In goes the liquid malt extract. Now that is dark. That is black as sin, that is crikey. This is the first time I've done a stout. I've normally done pails and IPAs. Um, so yeah, it should be good. I should have probably done one to start where I haven't messed with it, so I knew what the finished product was like without adding anything or doing like that, but I'm not trying to uh, be disrespectful for the kit makers, but they just all the kits I've done are just bland unless you add your own hops and mess with it a little bit. But it depends whether you want just a standard um, standard ale or whether you want something that's got a bit more bite. All right, so I've got some boiled water over here to pour into this. Well, it was boiled about half an hour ago when I. Thought I was going to do it, but then I had to wait because the Turkish Delight took a really long time to melt. Um, I'm not going to put that in just yet, that's going in second. While that's boiling, I'll just mix this in. So instead of using water from the kettle straight away, what I do is because I boil my hops and use that water um, as the as the start water basically to help you mix all this lovely gloop in. <laughs> and you just mix and mix and mix until it's all good in there. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Mix and mix and mix. It takes forever. So I probably won't be able to do it all in one go because it does take so long to mix in. The more you mix it in, the better the ferment will be the better the flavour will be, instead of it just being sat there and not mixed in properly. Everything's been sanitised, as I always say, everything that touches this brew has been sanitised. Even if it was a last minute sanitisation, like that thing, which actually had no contact with the beer itself, only the top of the hops that was being pushed down. So therefore, there is a very, very, very slim chance 
that there's going to be any contamination. So pour some hot water into this, which will then just open that out, allowing us to put in all the loveliness that's left in the bottom of this pack, which you want because it's essentially what's going to make your beer taste nice. Now do be careful when you do put the hot water in this. I find a little technique is really good, is if you fold that flap over like that and then let it jig around, you don't get anything on you. Safety first. But these kits are brilliant for starting out when you're starting out brewing. Now I've been brewing these now for what, best part of a year and a half and they're just so simple to bash together. It's, it's a brilliant starting point. Um, hopefully next year, I'll be moving to a four grain kit, all grain, full grain, whatever you call it, and uh, actually creating my own recipes from buying grain and just figuring out what works and what doesn't work, you know, just uh, getting a little bit more into it. And yeah, good fun. So now we're just gonna carry on mixing that in now. Now we've got that extra watery shizzling in. Quick wash of the hands. <clears throat> We're gonna definitely mix this all up right. So, I think that's nearly done. It's not that, that extra hot water's really helped. This is, this is dark, man. I, I, it is so dark. You can see it. You can actually see how dark that is. Amazing. I'm very excited for this one. The um, the lemon sour I did, uh, mangrove jacks lemon sour. wasn't too impressed with that, to be fair. I wouldn't do that one again. There's a few that I would do again. I'd do the New Zealand pale again. Um, I'd do the juicy session IPA because that was a banger. That was that was really nice. Um, probably the best one out of the Mangrove Jacks ones. Um, there's still a couple that I want to try, uh, which I will I'll just plod on through them. Because I share half of it with a mate of mine, you see. So I brew it, he pays half for whatever the ingredients cost, and then he doesn't have to do anything. He just benefits from his mate brewing it, which is nice of him, isn't it? You know who you are. Won't drop any names. You know who you are. Right, that's that all lovely and mixed up in there now. Let's bring it over so you can have a quick look at that. Oh, look at that yummy. Put you back up on my shelf of handiness, which just gives you a better view of what I'm actually doing. So now, in with the pure malt extract. So this is pretty much the sugars that are going to go into it. Instead of using a bag of brewing sugar, which you can do, you can even use table sugar if you don't have any brewing sugar, but that can leave it with a bit of an odd taste. Um, I've done it before and it can be, it can taste a bit chemically uh, as where these, as well as the sugar, it's got like the extra, it's got the extra malts in there and it just it does give you a better bodied beer as well flavor mouth feel you name it it's all better just from using these uh liquid malt kits i use mangrove jacks just because i can get hold of them quite easily they're reasonably priced you pretty much pay the same as what you would pay for a bag of brewing sugar uh brewing sugar is maltodextrin which is or is it just dextrose? No, it's just dextrose, sorry. Maltodextrose is a brew enhancer. That's what that is. So I'm gonna do the same again, get some hot water in this, get all that extra shizney out because we don't wanna waste it. You paid for it, so bloody use it. Right then, so fold that lid down because we don't want to get burnt. Let's make 
make sure you keep that clamp down when you do, because this gets hot. And this is like a foil metallic packet, so plastic foil. And this is really good for sealing stuff with, but it's terrible for conducting heat. Well, I mean, it's very good for conducting heat, sorry. So it will be very, very hot. So be careful. Because nobody wants to burn themselves, do they? I know I don't. It's not nice. I'm allergic to pain. Right, that's about as much as we're going to get into that. Again. It's always good to keep some water with some sanitizer in, in case you just quickly remember something that you needed to sanitize or forget. Like half the time, I forget to sanitize my uh, hydrometer and then have to do it quickly at the last minute, which isn't a major issue, but it's just a pain in the ass when you, it holds you up to what you're actually doing. So we're going to mix that one in now. Get it all nice and in there. Until you can't see it gloopy. So when you lift it up like that, if it dribbles off like that and goes into like some spirally gooey mess, you ain't got it mixed in enough yet. So just keep on going at it for as long as you feel necessary. Oh, this looks gorgeous. I'm really hoping that it works. I'm trying to make a very strong version of this. Um, some people say that, you know, stouts are for winter and you know what? I don't think they are. I think stouts are for any time you want to drink a bloody stout. You know, porters as well. Porters, I think porters are the same. You can drink a porter any time of year. I don't think I drink as many dark beers as I do light beers. I do prefer light beers, but there's always time for a, for a dark beer here and there, I reckon. Mix it up. I've got another friend who really didn't like dark beers um, to the point that, you know, he'd, he'd given me if he ever got one in this uh, subscription pack that we both have. And uh, he accidentally got one. And instead of giving it me, he drank it. And he really enjoyed it. And it might have very well opened his eyes back into something that he's missing out on. Which is brill. So I can still feel this a bit a bit gloopy down at the bottom there. So I'm just going to keep on going with this. And trying to think of things to talk about whilst doing it. I also brew mead as well. So if you want to uh, check out a couple of other videos that I've done done some experimental meads which was uh i just obviously didn't know what was going to happen and uh the the maybe mediocre mead actually turned out really well I, ha I need to try it actually and possibly add more honey it may develop into a sack mead i may just keep feeding it until the yeast dies from reaching its alcohol tolerance and um just keep on adding adding more until it does give up until it doesn't give in uh, anymore. I think we're there. Yeah, I think we're there. I think we are. Oh, well, actually, tell you what, it's not the second, uh, first dark beer I've done. I did a brown ale once, many moons ago. But it didn't, it didn't turn out as well. But that's, it was like, I think my third ever brew. It didn't turn out amazing, but we drank it. <laughs> so now I'm going to fill up all of that with water, actually. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm certainly not. <laughs> I'm going to put the Turkish Delight in. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. That's just a pack of Turkish Delight. Whole box of it. Just in there. Dog's gonna go whapper in a minute because there's a fly just come in the house. As long as it's stable. Like that. Gloopy! Right, so 
right, let's see what we can get out of this, because the more we get, the better. Right, so that's that in there. This may not even work. It may just turn out like shit. I could just, you know, you never know when you try new things. Oh, that smells good. It does, that smells really good. to add some water. This kit will do 23 litres, which is about 40 pints. I just use tap water. I don't have a distiller or a um, a filter or anything. So tap water it is. Trying to do it from a great height as well, decorate this, the wallpaper there. It needs to redecorate in any way, to be honest. Um, a few more of these. I'm gonna cut out and then come back because you don't wanna see me doing this. We're back. So, I have decided to use less water. I'll tell you why. Because with the sugar that's in there, the less water you use, if all that sugar's then fermented, you get a higher ABV, so a stronger beer, should be tasting nice. So, that's why. It's only one litre difference, but it will make a difference to the ABV. So now, we're gonna beat this up. We're gonna get lo lots of air in there, because the yeast need it to be able to start their, um, is it propagation? No. Um, basically to start multiplying and start a colony that's it and we want to make them as happy as possible definitely want to make them as happy as possible now there's already quite a lot of froth on this and it might very well froth up as, as well it's uh, done. Adding the air at this point is very important. See, when I tip the water in, I tipped it from quite a height so that it naturally just pushes loads of air into that, that wart. You won't be able to put any more air into this after you've pitched your yeast because it needs to stay closed off and sanitary after that. So we are going to beat it in now. I've got it in my face. Yummy! Oh, I should have tasted it. That would have been a perfect time to taste it. Although it would have no alcohol in it, it just tastes sugary. all nice and mixed in I think we have well I hope we have because I'm knackered um, I'm gonna place that I don't need that at the moment I'm gonna need that I'm gonna need that and I'm gonna need that I just don't want any of that gunk to drip on that this is for something else in a minute so that can go over there right so now 
now we check the temperature. Don't pick your yeast unless your wort is at 24 degrees Celsius or lower. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, you'll have to convert it, sorry. Um, mine's saying it's between 22 and 24. Perfect for pitching yeast. But before I pitch the yeast, I'm going to take a hydrometer reading, which I should have left that out there. See, no matter what, you think you've got it, you think you've nailed it, you think you've got it sorted and everything's cushed in, and then you still forget shit. All the time, every time. So we're gonna plunge in, we're gonna get some of this, and we're gonna take a hydrometer reading. So we know approximately how much alcohol will be in our beer. actually see because there's some uh, there's lots of bubbles in there from the froth so I'm gonna put it as far up to the top as I can and try and see it a bit better Yeah, this can be a bit tricky <laughs> when you've beaten so much air into it you always get the foam and the froth so i'm looking at that i'm looking at 42 4 and these bubbles here are annoying because they can give you an artificial reading not so much but they can and now it's gone the other way around i'm going with 44 I think that's what it says, so we're going to go with that, which isn't a great deal, really. Hmm. I would have thought it would be more with the extra extra added sugar, because the one I did before this was 42. Hmm. 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 Ah, well, we'll just see what happens. Either way, it's going to be nice. And this has been sanitized so it can go back in. We don't want to waste it. That's that pretty much done. Now you pitch your yeast, get your airlock, fill it up with some sanitized water, place your lid on, and wait seven days. After seven days, check the gravity. If it's below it's normally around nine, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 1.020. Then you can pitch your, sorry, pitch. You can put your uh, dry hops in if you're using a dry hops. Most of Mangrove Jack's kits do have dry hops. The only one that I did that didn't have dry hops in it was the uh, Strong Bourbon Ale. So yeast. Spread evenly around, all over the place. Because they can, they can build, I call them yeastbergs, and they just plump up and it's a right pain in the ass. It doesn't, it won't cause it any harm eventually, it will work its way down and it will get down there to business. Um, and then we're gonna mix that in, gently. We've already mixed it now, we're only mixing that yeast in to let it go and get on with its job. If you see any on the sides, get them in as well. Make a stronger colony, which is what you want. You want your colony of yeast to be as strong as possible so that it can munch all them sugars producing alcohol, which is what we're aiming for really, isn't it?
some of that's going to mix, mix into the bottom, some of that will sit on the top, but it will work its way down eventually. Bloody yeastbergs. Oh, all clumped together, look. <laughs> One of the chaps that I follow uh, on YouTube, I love his methods and stuff like that, he's so funny. Um, he says that yeast don't know their tolerance, so they just carry on sometimes. Yeast don't know that they're supposed to do something, they just kind of do it because they have no choice in the matter. <laughs> uh, right, so that's all that mixed in, lovely jubbly. We're gonna get that out of the way now, that out of the way. Dribbling all over the place. Get that in the water, because I'm gonna use that again in a minute for something else. Now, we are gonna get the airlock. And I'm gonna tip crap all over me, which has been resting in the bottom of there. It's rather, just quickly sanitize that. Pardon me. Goes into your airlock bong. In fact, we always put the bong in first. That's how we roll. There we go. That goes on there. That goes. In there, like so, just enough in there, not too much. And then we close the bucket off, making sure no more air can get into there and only gases can escape through the airlock. Now, this could foam up quite high, sometimes I've had them go up to over there, but they normally got enough room to sort themselves out and release the gases that they need to do and foams and stuff like that but we'll see we'll see what happens just making sure that that's all really really on there because if it isn't and you've got a slight bit of a break in the seal anywhere it uh it'll make you not be able to see what's actually happening with the airlock so right, so that's that for now. Seven days, I'm gonna leave that there. Some people put it in a dark place. I like to keep it warm, to be fair. My kitchen is normally about 22 to 24 degrees. Sorry, 20, 20 to 22 degrees. This is a bit warmer because it's had the hot stuff in. Eventually, it will cool down to normal temperature. And that's that. Seven days, we'll be back to check it. Take a reading, see where we're at, see what it's doing and possibly throw 100 grams of hops in. Boom. Check out a, if you're in the UK, they may ship um, elsewhere, I'm not sure. Check out a hops company called Cross My Loof. They're up in Scotland. Um, they're brilliant. The list of hops that they've got is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely astounding. Um, every time I've looked for a hops, I've been able to find it. I've never not had the hops I was looking for. Cool, well that wraps that up and yeah, seven days. We'll be back to see what this bitch is doing. Less than 24 hours later, um, we've got a massive head of throff and the airlock is extremely active, which is good. It means the yeast is colonized and it's cracking on with getting rid of all the uh, sugars producing alcohol instead, which is what we put them in there for. So good on them. <laughs>